Hello, I want to talk about uh, The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly, the famous uh, movie by uh, Clint Eastwood. And I want to talk about, do a little movie review of that, uh, of that classic movie, uh, The Western. Uh, it's a great movie. Uh, the Good and the Bad and the Ugly is an excellent movie. Um, I would give it, let's say, a B plus. I, I would. The only reason I wouldn't give it like an A or an A minus is because the, the pacing is a little bit. It's a. It's like an epic. It's really like an epic western. And it, you know, if it's if you look at it as an as an epic, and you know, you're a patient person, maybe it's an A or an A minus. But it's it's it really is a great movie. It took me. Uh, I watched it over a period recently of two days. Because I couldn't, it was, it's like a double movie. It's twice the regular length of a movie. And uh, so, so, uh, you know, that's, it took me two days to get through it. Anyway, uh, so I just want to talk about basically um, the a theme and a couple of the characters, a few of the characters, the good, the bad, and the ugly. I want to talk about the, the three principal characters and, uh, uh, do a little psychological criticism of those. So, uh, you know, uh, Tuco Angel Eyes, about Tuco Angel Eyes. Now, Angel Eyes is a psycho, well, he's a psychopath, okay? He's, uh, and I'm going to talk a little bit about how to recognize a psychopath because he has antisocial personality. And um, <clears throat> I'm going to focus particularly on on, on uh, Tuco and, and Angel Eyes. Uh, because of they because of their antisocial personality, um, as well as the theme of uh, good versus evil and the in the in the angel eyes, what that the significance of that. So now Tugo Tugo says angel eyes. He he says this. He says even a beggar like that has a protecting angel because he's talking about Tuco who is the ugly. He's this scoundrel. Uh, this he's just a bad person. That's why he's the bad of the good, the bad, and the ugly. He's the bad, and he's he's terrible. Uh, but Tuco says of him, even a beggar like that has a protecting angel. Now this there's this, this line right here is uh, it's like a there's a sea of there's a sea of uh, of uh, meaning hidden beneath that line because angel eyes, angel eyes. Just think about. What, what's your impression? Angel eyes. Well, angel, you have a, you know, typically a person's going to have a picture of an angel, which is a positive thing. Well, angel eyes says even a beggar like that has a protecting angel. Okay, so he's talking about Blondie, which is the Clint Eastwood character, that he's a protecting angel, which is good. Uh, on the other hand, who's saying it? Angel eyes is saying this. Angel eyes. So we're going to see that angel, angel eyes is actually... A dark angel. He's like symbolic of the demonic. So he's he's the the bad. He's the bad. So that's the foil here. Uh, angel eyes is the foil for Blondie, who is the, a protecting. He's like a protecting angel. So all right. So anyway, we have that them we have that thematically. Is this uh, good 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 angel versus evil angel? And uh, we, you can you can just see how that plays out throughout the film. In one scene, Angel Eyes savagely beats a woman. Angel Eyes, remember, this is the demonic, the evil, the dark angel, the fallen angel. So Angel Eyes savagely beats a woman because he wants information from her, and it's it's a it's brutal. Uh, but at the same time, he seems to relish in the power that he has over this this poor woman and uh that's characteristic of antisocial uh antisocial uh behavior um antisocial so now there's a case study of a of a prisoner with uh, this is a true true story i mean a true case study a real life case study of an, a person of a prisoner with antisocial personality yeah, in a jail in, in uh, West West Bengal. So the case study reveals that uh, this person, who I'm not going to name because uh, one of the characteristics of uh, antisocial behavior is complete and utter disregard for the feelings and well-being of other people, as we saw 
with uh, the way uh, the way uh, Angel Eyes treated that woman. But uh, I'm not going to uh, out of respect for even a, a potentially bad person. I'm gonna I'm not going to name them. Uh, but a case a case history of uh, reveals that this person was jailed jailed uh, several times for before the cheating case for assaulting a friend. So he's, this person was known for assault. This time they were jailed for fighting with a police constable. And during interrogation, this person admit that he has beaten another Im impulse, beaten, beaten another Im inmate who refused to pay money. So this is a violent person with antisocial personality disorder, violent person beating people left and right. So you can see, you can almost already see a comparison between the, this behavior and uh, angel eyes. And also this real life person wanted to show show his power and there was no remorse in his action. And that's clearly what we see in Angel Eyes. He, he, he's an utterly remorseless character and uh, seems to just revel in his, in, in his power and his, his ability to just dominate and take people out. Now, Tuco is the ugly. Uh, you know, it, when, 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 he, when Tuco, for example, needs a gun in the story, what he does is he, he goes into, he forces his way into a, a, a gun shop when they're at closing time. And a merchant, it's just a regular merchant. He happens to sell guns. But this is the Old West when they sell, you know, the merchant sells everything. He's got the flour, the corn, and some guns over here. So, um, so Tuco, the ugly, forces his way in there. And he starts looking at the guns. And uh, just uh, basically what happens is he steals the gun. He steals a gun. Okay. Uh, this is a lot of money. This is a merchant, and the guy Tuco is just steals the gun. Then he then he does he goes further. He he basically uses that gun in order to rob the merchant, and so uh, for all the money that the merchant has. And this this just shows um, how how uh, uncaring that Tuco is obviously for what, how he treats other people. But it goes beyond that because when he 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 not he not only <clears throat> he not only robs this man, but he seems to revel in humiliating him at the same time. Uh, <clears throat> so there's no remorse whatsoever. He 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 loves to humiliate this person, and uh, that can be a trait of antisocial personality as well. So as a foil to these psychopaths, uh, when Blondie Clint Eastwood's character. Uh, comes upon a dying soldier. He doesn't laugh at him or spit on him or humiliate him or something like that you might expect from Angel Eyes or Tuco. But Blondie, Clint Eastwood's character, comes upon a dying soldier. He shows him compassion. Now, keep in mind, Blondie's kind of a criminal himself. I'm sorry. Yeah, he, Blondie's kind of a criminal himself. But he's he's different in the sense that he is he has compassion for people. So I'm not saying he's a role model, but he's uh, he has compassion. So he's a foil to these. He's the opposite of the of Angel Eyes, the dark angel, and and Tuco with antisocial personality, because he shows compassion to this dying man. Uh, he realizes when he realizes he tries to help him, uh, but when he realizes he can't save him, he takes off his beautiful long jacket and he puts it over the shaking soldier to keep him warm as he dies. So it's an, it's an amazing moment of compassion that you would never see that from Tuco or, or Angel Eyes. So that shows how he's actually um, symbolic of the Angel of Light. Um, now, there's a psychopathic patient, a case study. Now, here again, uh, this person, uh, when it comes to the, the issue of compassion, this person almost laughs out loud about how it, it's a it's totally a joke. The whole idea of compassion for another person is contemptible to them, and so uh, this this came out when they were uh, talking to their their, their shrink uh, that when it says when I ask him how did how how do they feel about three of his victims died in heart attacks as a result of his misdeeds? This was a psychopath who literally destroyed their lives caused him even to have a heart attack. He barely suppresses an urge to laugh out loud. 
Okay, so they th this is someone who has no conscience, no remorse, and uh, that's that's the opposite of what we see with Blondie, but it's exactly what we see with uh, Tuco and Angel Eyes. And it says here that that he looks completely puzzled and disdainful when I ask him why he did what he what he did, and he says for money, of course. So he blurts out he blurts this out loud. Uh, just with contempt. So uh, the motive for this person to to add it, to destroy and use and abuse other people with no remorse is just money. It's just to get what they want. And the inmate is contemptuous towards the meek and the weak in this real life case study. Uh, life is hostile. One long cruel battle. No holds barred. This is the the life the the mindset. Uh, only one, only the fittest survive. Okay, here again, Tuco and Angel Eyes clearly have a similar worldview as this real life uh, psychopath. For example, we see that we we see that when Tuco robs the merchant, he not only robs him, but he laughs at him with contempt and and he humiliates him be, be it to the point where, no doubt. Not only, not only it was bad enough that the guy was robbed, but he was humiliated to such a way that he'll never forget it. He'll never forget it, and, and the humiliation that he'll suffer from will far exceed, I'm sure, for, for the rest of his life. Uh, were that a real person, the, the humiliation is what would stick with him the most, because that's the sort of power that uh, uh, was 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 exercised over him by Tuco. So. His shrink tells him under different he tells his shrink, okay, this is a real the real real life case example. Under different circumstances, you and I would have been a great team. He promises he promises me as that I as psycho psych, psychiatrist am definitely one with the most astute and erudite persons he has ever met. So we have this flattery. He's trying to flatter his shrink and then he tries to get him to do something that is inappropriate, uh an, an extra favor with uh, uh rights for uh, inmates that he shouldn't have had, like uh, getting him a phone call he couldn't have. So he's he's flattering him to get something. So it's manipulation, common uh, in some prisoners. Uh, so this is like Tuco when he tries to kill Blondie, but then he learns that Blondie knows where the gold is, and he does a switch. He does a switch, and suddenly, suddenly he's flattering Blondie. And, oh, he, Blondie is the best, and he wants to help. He does everything to save Blondie's life, his greatest friend and partner, and he, uh, you know, he he's becomes this great flatterer, but it's all about getting what he wants and manipulation, and he's uh, he's utterly ruthless and utterly without conscience, and, you know, if Blondie knows you don't turn your back on him, this flattery is completely transparent. So, uh, there is a case of a prisoner who I won't mention, who's a coal, who is considered a cool and collected manipulator who is willing to kill repeatedly to reach his financial and social goals. Well, that's great. Okay. Uh, he was known as confident, attractive, and a well-dressed man. Okay. This, this could be a perfect description of Angel Eyes in the movie, uh, The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly, because Angel, uh, Angel Eyes was confident, attractive, well-dressed man. He was a cool looking dude. And he looked, uh, he looked confident and well, very well dressed, very con very smart, uh, and yet he was evil. So this real life, this real life uh, criminal uh, psychopath, he had the ability to be likable through superficial through superficial charm. And again, we've seen that through through Tuco, these two scoundrels. So there you go. There's there's sort of a character analysis of uh, of uh, the great movie. Uh, the Good, the Bad, and the Ugly with uh, Clint Eastwood. And uh, I recommend the movie if you've got patience. Um, if you've got patience for a long movie and you like westerns, and uh, it's a, it's a, it's like I said, it's a double sized movie. So uh, I recommend it. I certainly do. It's a great movie, one of the classics of the genre. So thanks for, thanks for watching and fight on.